Good morning, everyone. It's Jelani. Morning scripture came from Daniel chapter 10, which we're going to read. Um, suggestion from my wife. Um, the topic of how God still speaks to us. Right? And I'm um, just going to use some examples from the scripture. Um, that anything that comes to mind and I haven't read this chapter just yet, but I'm pretty sure it is fitting also. I'll just skim the first few verses. So, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, we come before you this morning, as every morning, to thank you for yet another glorious day of life that you have blessed us with. Another day in which we can move, live, and have our being in you. And in all things, Heavenly Father, we are praying without failure that we are continuing in you in this life. We're not just mere living, but living for you. And we know without doubt that there is that need to continue in the hope, hoping that you have everything sorted. Not only that, that you are who you are, you are the God of all creation, also knowing that you cannot lie, so what you have said must come to pass, hoping and praying for the re your return. And not that we are praying that it come quick, but that we are ready for when you do return. So we're not praying that it comes quick or slow or fast or whatever timing, that's up to you. If we needed to know, you would have given us a new word, but you specifically left that out. What we do pray for is that we are ready whenever you return, if it's tomorrow, if it's next year, if it's 10 years from now, or whenever, we want to be ready. So Heavenly Father, encourage us, please, encourage us whilst we go on in this life we know that from our mortal lens years do seem like a long time and there is the need to be patient because again your word has said that a thousand years is like a day in your sight and a day like a thousand years and knowing this we are very thankful that we are yet still here, given the maximum permissible time to get right and to move or to turn away from those things that destroy us. So my petition, as it has been each and every day for myself, for my wife, for my family, for my friends, for my brothers and sisters in the faith all over the world, is that we may be led by your Holy Spirit instructed by your holy word to know and to do and to fulfill your good acceptable perfect and holy will which is the summary of it all we want to please you by loving you with all that we are and loving one another as you have taught us for in this we will without fail prosper without fail we will conquer this world as you have taught us and as you will be in us to do so so heavenly father we thank you for health strength daily food we thank you for provision we thank you for all that you have given us or what you have withheld from us we just pray as always that we are content in all aspects of our lives and that not only that we are content but whatever you have given us whether little or great we are using it for the glory of God to show forth the kindness and the glory and the love of God in the face of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So as we pers persist, as we continue on this narrow path, keep us from falling, keep us from slipping, keep us from being moved, keep us from waning on faith, keep us from unbelief. Keep us from a double-minded um, heart. 
our mind keep us from sin keep us from destruction keep us from all those things that are displeasing unto you keep us from all those things that are not pleasing unto you it said lord keep us in the fruits of your spirit which are love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness and temperance in all things that we may bear fruit and record and witness of our eternal father in the face of our lord and savior jesus christ so heavenly father help us therefore throughout the test and trials of life that we do not faint but we continue to pray and not faint that we don't give up because you have said those who endure until the end they shall be saved that we do not give over to this world because you said we cannot love god and mammon we cannot love this world and love god at the same time and we choose you today to love you with all that we are and where there is any thing lacking we pray that in sincerity that we never become hypocrites but in sincerity that we confess those things and confess our sins before you and that you being faithful as you are oh heavenly father you will help us through all our shortfalls and our shortcomings continue to help us therefore to persevere continue to use us in the lives of the youth to rare, rare, raise them up in the knowledge truth and understanding of who you are by being not only speakers of what you and who you are but being an example and that we continue to help one another in love in the seasons appointed that we are put placed in each other's lives and that you continue to promote to nurture to sustain and put your head of protection around marriages in the pursuit of godly marriages so that in all things we as mankind may glorify you help us in the good fight of faith help us to not be overcome by our enemy the devil but that through you lord jesus christ we shall overcome all things which is our us today and forevermore until that time that we are in your eternal peace in your eternal kingdom forevermore we thank you for all things O oh heavenly father through and by and for and in the holy righteous name of our lord and savior jesus christ yeshua hamashiach we pray amen okay so daniel chapter 10. in the third year of cyrus king of persia a thing was revealed unto daniel whose name was called belteshazzar and the thing was true but the time appointed was long and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hidekel, then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen whose loins were girded with fine gold of uvas. His body also was like the beryl, and his face as the apparel appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and his Sorry, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone, and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me. For my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, 
and I retained no strength. Yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. And behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, Understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many for many days. And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face toward the ground and became dumb. And behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him that stood before me, O my Lord, by the vision of my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. For how can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? For as for me, straightway there remained no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Then there came again and then there came again and touched me, one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me, and said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened, and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Then said he, Knowest thou what? Wherefore I come unto thee, and now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth me, sorry, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things. But Michael, your prince. Amen. Okay. So dealing with the topic of um, the Lord speaking with us and how he speaks with us and examples of him speaking to us as mankind, etc., etc. I said this was a very um, fitting scripture because this is one means or method in which the Lord speaks to us here Daniel saw a vision right and it was of angels right which were sent to him because he was petitioning the Lord and one key thing before we even go on was the way in which he petitioned the Lord it says here in um in verse in verse 2 down he said he was mourning three full weeks and ate no pleasant bread neither flesh nor wine in his mouth neither did he anoint himself at all three whole weeks until the three whole weeks were fulfilled so I believe this is what people call Daniel fast or I think people refer to it as Daniel fast that's just we putting up a, a word or a title and something you can just read it as it is. That's what Daniel did, right? And um, 
this act when we do fast or we do um deprive ourselves of earthly pleasures etc it is a show of our sincerity in seeking the lord for some kind of answer or some kind of intervention and don't get me wrong there is fasting and then there is starving yourself there is fasting and then there is you just not doing something right there is it's different and even myself sometimes i catch myself um not being sincere in it and in that it's better you just 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 don't even consider it um no not that's not what i'm trying to say it's better if you if you do something in sincerity and it's just a short thing then to try to be holier than thou and it's not in spirit and in truth it's not sincere right because again we can't trick god with he knows our hearts right so and even when we were reading the other day, remember we were reading the Pharisee and the publican um, and how the Pharisee was like, oh, I fast this times per week and I give, uh, give things to the poor and all of that stuff. Speaking of his own righteousness and then the publican saying, um, look upon me, God, for I am a sinner. Right? And what did Jesus say? That publican went back to his house more justified than the than the pharisee right so when we do things we want to do it in spirit and in truth and this is one thing that i've noticed over the years that we as mankind we kind of struggle with sometimes because yes we want to do things or we want to please our heavenly father but sometimes the mundaneness of it like if we because don't get me wrong we're in a battle you know and sometimes you get like in a battle you're going to be fighting and sometimes we get a bit um sometimes weakened or discouraged or whatever it might be right but guess what the one that we serve is always going to strengthen us is always going to encourage us etc 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 so we can always get back to that place of sincerity if we seek after him we don't give up that's one thing we can't do is give up we can't give up even if we find ourselves not being as sincere as we once were don't give up same way it's better we press on and continue to 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 again confess what we are or how we are falling short our shortcomings and ask that he do hear our petition and grant us that we we don't fall into folly right again i, I don't it's not a cookie cutter because as, as i said like sometimes we fast and like we start off the fast and it's not sincere and you know because we continue it jump start the sincerity so i don't know i don't know it's not one can, uh, cookie cutter answer but i must say what we do want though is that we're doing things in spirit and in truth in sincerity because again the lord is seeking after such he wants us to be sincere in when we come to him right we have to remember also that he is our king he is the god of creation we are not masters of him he's not servants of us we are servants of him he is the master just because he's loving and kind and long-suffering and he does serve us as a king that serves us but we should never forget that he's still above us in servitude right it's just that he because of his loving kindness that he he actually does stuff for us right and not because he is old or he's due to do it for us it's not that he's um, obligated to do it for us he does it because of his love towards us right so i say all of that to say when we are speaking to our heavenly father again our heart position is sincerity we want to check ourselves one perfect psalm that you might hear me regurgitate ever so often i say ever so often because it really it speaks volume to me every time i'm in that position and i'm like you know what lord search me out for us is that psalm that says search me oh lord and know my heart try me and know my thoughts see if there be some wicked way in me cleanse me from every sin and lead me on to life everlasting in more or less words right i'm kind of chopped it up with the song and all of that stuff but 
that's basically what the psalm says right and that's because again we don't want to just be saying or doing things of our own will we don't want to be hardened in heart or um what's the word i'm looking for or hypocrites right we don't want to become hypocrites we saw how jesus dealt with hypocrites right he rebuked them quite a lot in in the in the gospel you hypocrites right he, he said that quite plain it might sound harsh but again if we're being hypocritical we want a strong rebuke so that we can turn from those ways so when we think about our heavenly father first of all that's one aspect of how we look how he responds to us how he talks to us is first getting ourselves in a place where and oh that's ultimately him helping us through it all too getting ourselves in a place where we can seek him in spirit and in truth and when we are awaiting those answers we have to remember that god is in control and we don't dictate to him he does what is perfect and right continually right and yes back in the, like when we read the scriptures and all of that stuff we, we always say like god like speaking to like moses or abraham and or daniel here and it's like whoa all right the lord show up and showed out like with him glory and all of that stuff we saw where he spoke to the children of israel in the wilderness coming down in a pillar smoke and fire and all of that stuff and then we look at our present life and say, ah, oh, well, is the Lord really talking to me? Or is he really hearing my prayers? Is he really answering my prayers? But what I would like to say is we today, believe it or not, have a greater advantage of those individuals of old. If we look with respect of the promise that has been sent unto us by our lord and savior jesus christ remember back in the day it was a certain individual that the lord selected and he spoke to them and then they spoke to the people etc what we have been given in this present day and age by christ coming and um teaching and ultimately dying and ra raising up in being raised from the dead and being glorified is the fact that he has sent us the comforter of the holy spirit to abide in us this is a direct communication we have no veil we don't have any necessity and think of how he like think of the ease of the the communication that we can have with our heavenly father now i said back in the day don't get me wrong there was still communication a person could still pray they normally pray towards jerusalem towards the temple etc but guess what? We are the temple of the living God. He dwells in those who are his, right? If we accept him and ask him to dwell in us. So how he speaks to us may not be in that extravagance or what we deem as extravagance. Like, as I said, sending an angel with lightning in a, like lightning face and flame of fire eyes and all of these stuff, right? To speak to, speak to us face to face. But again, what do we have? We have our Heavenly Father residing in us by His Holy Spirit, right? By the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, remember that also, <laughs> you know, the Lord speaks to us. I like, don't get me wrong, I do like reading these accounts also because I know if the Lord did it, then He can do it now. And He does speak to us still in dreams and visions and all of that stuff, but... We have to be mindful also of, of where these visions and dreams come from because again it says in the scripture that dreams come through a multitude of business sometimes it's just what we've been thinking throughout the day and things and things that we've been worrying about that triggers dreams etc but there are dreams i know without doubt that the lord do does give us right and how we differentiate the, between those dreams or visions or etc is we go to the, 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 the one who gives them. We go to our eternal father, reveal unto us what this means. Notice Daniel, he never just go after his own instinct or gut feeling or nothing like that. He always made sure that he got the understanding from the one who gave the, the vision or the dream. Remember, even when 
both both each other both each other now when them i can't remember the king way what they had the writing on the wall and all of that stuff these individuals are um the vision of um, nebuchadnezzar again the reason why daniel was able to interpret these things is because he had a com a con a communication with the one who was given it so he could ultimately give the understanding of these things and i believe he always makes sure that it was referenced that look it's not of me that this this thinks like god is the interpreter of all of these things right i believe he made note of that correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure he did so again sometimes we'll be praying i will pray and i will pray and one thing that spoke to me in this chapter here was when they it says um where did it say it says um this thing was for a time to come right where is it i can't remember what verse it was uh oh it was oh the top one <laughs> The thing was true, but the time appointed was long and you understood the thing and oh it was the intro, right? A thing was revealed unto Daniel whose name was Belteshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. I don't know about everyone, but even sometimes there are certain visions and dreams that the Lord give us and we, we, we acknowledge that it's a, a vision of the Lord. We have gotten some revelation or some visions, etc. Of I mean, some understanding of the vision. But sometimes, because we don't see it, it's like we, we lose hope. Like, we're like, was that really of God or was, was I just thinking that it was of God? But what I would say is, this is where patience come into play. If we do believe that it is of God, hold fast to that belief. If he revealed it unto you and he confirmed in the time when he gave it to you that this is of me, be patient. What we need to do is to do that exactly, to be patient. Because again, he knows what is perfect he might reveal something unto you 20 years ago because he knew that 20 years later when he reveals it when he manifests it or whatever those 20 years that elapsed would have made you equipped because you would have known it 20 years ago and he would have been working on you for those 20 years to equip you mentally spiritually emotionally to deal with that thing that he has shown you so how he works is perfect as i said there's no clear cookie cutter because there's things that he might show you now and it happened immediately right there's some things that take some days months years i don't know how he he, he prescribes it for everyone because i'm not god all i know that he knows what is perfect and he expects us to believe trust and not be moved so as i said that's a one way that he normally talks to us and i was just using um daniel there because we've read it but how he normally talks to us also is by what he has said the recorded words of what he has said and done throughout the world throughout the ages and that is in his word the holy scriptures and it, i believe one part here in the verse it mentioned scripture it says um where is it because when i read it i'm like oh that's interesting where is it gone um no i come to the da, 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 da. Uh, such words uh, da, 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 spirit, da, da. all right i can't find it just yet but i'm pretty sure there was a place where it was talking about the scripture Oh, it would have been nice to reference that. I should have noted it. Give me a second. Uh, okay. I'm not seeing it. What? Uh, 
Yeah, I believe I read it. But anyway, right? If I see it, I'll, I'll mention it again. But as I said, like the scripture is there as the literal word, recorded word of God throughout the ages. And yes, it might not be God saying every single word in there, sometimes humans, but it gives us a, a story, shows us how God communicates with us as mankind throughout the ages. Right? He tells us what is right. He tells us what is wrong. He shows us what is right. He shows us what is wrong. By, by examples and if he said it's wrong 2,000, 4,000 years ago it's wrong today, right? <laughs> God don't just change alright, it's alright, no, all right, no if it was right from the beginning, it's right now if it's wrong it's wrong, right? how we do know what is wrong even more perfect is because Christ came and literally expounded and showed us in its in its purest form what is right and what is wrong and what God expects from us hence why we follow after Christ for the righteousness found in him so that the righteousness found in him can be found in us and um yeah right through the ages also we saw where God used individuals to talk to these people and even now there are people what um the Lord uses um, and bear in mind now, again, to show the grace that we have through our Lord Jesus Christ. Any one of us that have the indwell, dwelling Holy Spirit within us, who the Lord has given us his Holy Spirit and given us understanding through his word, he can use any single one of us as a light bearer to, to enlighten darkness, to give a word in in seasons appointed to encourage to show the love of God right and again just like how I was saying like the dream and visions we have to be mindful of how or where they come from and bring it back to the one who give gives the understanding of them so likewise individuals who may come to you and give you a word etc etc and saying it's of God how we know who is of God and who is not is to go back to the author, go back to the giver of the word, giver of the Holy Spirit. And that is our eternal father through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he would reveal unto us, if somebody come to you and say, oh, the Lord said such and such a thing. Like if somebody come to me and said, the Lord said such and such a thing. I'm not like giddy, like I'm not giddy because anybody can say that, right? Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't listen to the person because I'd never know who the Lord would use. I'm never going to like shoot down somebody and say, ah, because our, be, I respect our person and say, oh, God could use that person. And God, God can use anybody. But and just like he can use anybody, the devil does use individuals also. And we have to discern who is who, right? So again, somebody might come and say, and that's why I even, I haven't said it in a while, but I even these morning devotions are, are like to remind people like don't take my word for it go to the lord if i'm saying something wrong let him um let you know and by all means correct me if i'm wrong i say that all the time because again i would never want to be in the <laughs> in front of christ on judgment day and he, he he mentioned something that i've said to lead people astray i don't want that for me or anybody so again if anybody coming to you saying it's um, the Lord speaks, the Lord spoke to me to speak to you. Again, you can hear them out. Firstly, we can easily counter it if it goes against the Word of God, the written Scripture. We know a hundred percent that that wasn't of God because just if somebody said, "Come to you," let me give you a plain example. If somebody come and said, "You know." I know you and your sister was give, having issues, but the Lord told me to tell you to hate your sister, to despise her, to hate her, to cut her off, and to um, to condemn her to hell. Without doubt, right? Just, you never have to pray about that one because God already spoke and told you what he wants, right? You can still pray, don't get me wrong. But if we have the word and the, the understanding what he already gave us in the word, because it's still of God, the word, 
we know that that is not of him because he would never say something to contradict himself. And in his word, he told us to love one another as he has taught us. Right? So he speaks, and this is why it's important to not negate the importance of the Holy Word because there's so much to gain from just reading. Um, even the other day, I was having a discussion with my niece, and I remember telling her that there is nothing in this life that I've come or dealt with that I struggled with that this here, the Holy Scriptures there wasn't something in there to help me. There was always something in there to help me to get, to be governed through it. And with fasting, praying, etc. But all of them combined, there's always that the word of God to help us to, to get through our, our situations. And again, this is one key way in how the Lord speaks to us. And we see this again, even when what we read the other day with Jesus being tempted in the wilderness, right? It was a word that he quoted. And again, who quoted the word also? The devil. <laughs> but because the Holy Spirit bear record of the word and the word with the spirit, we know that when somebody use it unworthily or unrighteously, there is, there is always going to be the way to discern that if we are abiding in the word of God in the being led by his Holy Spirit, right? Because even the devil used scripture. And as I said, individuals, minions of the devil are going to use the, the name of the Lord or the word of the Lord to sometimes deceive or to get people to do those things that are not according to what the Lord wants us to do. Again, another thing that I would want to touch on with how the Lord speak to us and just to be reminded of why petitioning is is a given um two things when we're reading luke i think chapter 18 the other day and they said men ought to pray and not to faint that was that came to mind this morning and just now when i read this because bear in mind daniel here was three whole weeks he was he was inflicting himself and petitioning the Lord for for what he was petitioning the Lord for, right? What did the messenger of God come and tell him when he actually um, when he was receiving the word? He said, look, I was said to you from the first day that you made your, you, that you um, see there from the first day that thou did set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, the word thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael and one of the chief princes came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So sometimes we, we pray one time and we say, but we pray that already God now answer. God know my heart. Like, don't get me wrong. God knows your heart. He knows what we need before we ask. But I believe prayer and petitioning actually helps us not to lose drive, not to lose hope, not to lose um, heart. Right? Because again, we are in this spiritual battle and prayers are spiritual things. They are um earth like there there are things prayers are a spiritual manifestation of a physical earthly thing i, I don't know if i'm trying i'm trying to explain it how i see it because yes our prayers are in our hearts in our minds sometimes we pray them out loud and there are physical things, like we can relate to the things in our minds and our hearts and the things that we speak as like a physicalish thing, right? Waves and thoughts and all of that stuff. But they are a spiritual thing because they are the means in which we have a direct communication with our eternal father. And I say it like that because if you pick up the phone and call somebody, right we know how that well we, we kind of know how that works right the sound waves get transformed into electrical waves by this the, by a microphone and then those goes to an electrical signal by whatever means 
travel across the air or a physical means, a cable or something like that, and then it gets decoded and transformed back to an electrical signal and then back to a sound signal in the ears of somebody. That's all a physical, relatable, more like earthly means of communication. We understand that. But here what? With our prayers, yes, it starts off with a physical mean it's still sound energy but how the lord do it i don't know but it translates into a spiritual thing because I, and i say that in a sense based on what i read in revelation because when the lord was there was a part in the book of revelation when he was talking about the um the incense that were in the in the in the presence of the lord and said and he said these are the prayers of the saints i don't think i can skip to it because i'm not sure where exactly it is but i'll try let me i'll give it a, a few seconds um uh let's see if it's the same somebody can put it in the, in the um in the comment section right oh there we go found it so chapter 8 revelation chapter 8 it says it will start from verse 3 and it said another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of this of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne and the smoke of the incense which came which came with the prayers of the saint ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Was oh, that the one I'm looking for? Alright, correct me if I'm wrong. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find it. Yeah. But still, the prayers were there being offered up to the Lord, right? And we know God is a spirit. God resides in heaven. So if our prayers are fed, our words are being translated in a for, in, into a means in which it can be in heaven, because we know flesh and blood don't inherit the kingdom of God or in heaven, then we can know that our prayers are a spiritual thing. So again... Okay, I kind of went off on a tangent there, but <laughs> we're going back to our communication. What we started off and talk about, we want to be in a sincere heart, mind, etc. We want to be sincerely communicating with our Heavenly Father. How He responds is depending on how He sees fit, right? Um, as I said, there is ways that he has done of all where he has used vision or he has even sent an angel, right? We are in a privileged state in that the Lord does answer us directly. As I said, he can answer us through the word. He can confirm through the Holy Spirit. He can use individuals who are sent of him to give a word or to give our understanding, etc. He still do, does this does it as he has been doing from the beginning of time in making sure that we are not ignorant to the fact that he still loves us, he still cares for us, he still wants right from us, right? But we know that, again, this is not of ourselves, we can't do it of ourselves. Hence why we, come, we constantly seek him in what we should be doing or should not be doing. And again, in, the, in, our, in our things, we know that we can know what to do, what to think, what to say by what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has taught us said, and led us into doing by his word, by his Holy Spirit. So again, just a little, um, a little look into that. I said the topic was uh, my wife just was speaking about how the Lord communicate with us still and you know, just looking back how he done it of all, how he does it now. There's much more that could have been said. Um, but for the minute, that that's what the Lord has given me. And if if it, I, I don't believe this will be the last time we we'll go on to this chapter. 
certain things that I could remember, certain chapters and verses to support it. But yeah, oh, there we go. Just remember that scripture, the one I was talking about, the scripture, it was verse 21. Right, again, showing that the scripture from then has been a confirmation of what is truth, what the Lord expects us and wants us to do. And not only that, he gives us examples of what not to do, etc. So, again, I'm going to leave it at that today. Anything that you want to share, as always, drop it in the comment section or send it into the word at eachreach1.org. And as much as the Lord has led me, taught me, and kept me over the years, I will answer them according to his word according to his principles, according to his will, being led by his Holy Spirit. Have a blessed day, everyone, and God's willing, we'll catch up again tomorrow.